This video will cover Tier 3 of the British Forces, the company Command Post, costing 280 manpower and 115 fuel. First up in Tier 3 we have the Centre AA Mark II Cruiser Tank, costing 320 manpower, 100 fuel and 10 population cap, very good against infantry and shooting down enemy aircraft. Next up we have the Cromwell Cruiser Tank, costing 340 manpower, 110 fuel and 12 population cap. It is good against both tanks and infantry. The third unit in Tier 3 is the Sherman Firefly. Very effective against vehicles, even things like King Tigers. However, it is terrible against infantry. It costs 440 manpower, 145 fuel and 16 population cap. Upgrading to Tier 3 also allows your sapper squads to construct the 1780 gun emplacement, costing 400 manpower, 75 fuel and 14 population cap. Very effective against vehicles, terrible against infantry. Now, if you decide to choose Hammer Tactics, you unlock access to build the Comet Tank. Effective against infantry and vehicles, costing 480 manpower, 175 fuel and 18 population cap. Finally, if you decide to unlock Anvil, you have access to build the Churchill Infantry Tank. Costing 490 manpower, 165 fuel and 19 population cap. Also effective against all targets, but a lot slower than the Comet. Hey guys, here we go. So this is the sensor. Very effective against infantry, as I'll now show you. Selection, owner, enemy. Watch the sensor. Start to decimate these, this infantry, these infantry squads here. As you can see, enemies in no cover. The sensor will quick will make short work of them. One other thing, guys. Once the sensor, you can put hold fire on the sensor. But let's say the sensor got a stripe of veterancy. It unlocks the ability for 30 munitions. You could do a line of fire like this. So you can do a, a strafing run like like so. Which allows you to get a lot of nice quick about a DPS in. So it goes backwards and forwards twice. And as you can see, that quickly wrecks infantry. Any units that are kind of clumped up in a big line like that, you can absolutely wreck. It's worth noting, guys, that if you use the strafing ability and you make the uh, the arc of it very tiny, the um, your centaur won't just shoot in that, that arc that you've designated for it, right? Uh, if you do it like this, it'll still go. A it'll do a long strafe, as you can see here. So make sure you dictate the entire length of how we, how you want to fire. So generally, what well, a good idea with the centaur guys might be is if a opponent's pushing towards you, you might want to do do the strafing run like this. Because as he retreats, he might get hit by it, like so. Which is quite nice. And that is the Centaur's 30 munition ability to strafing fire. The Centaur can also shoot down aircraft as I'll now demonstrate. There you go, one plane's gone down. There you go. There you go. And when a Centaur kills a plane, it gains um, you know, a significant amount of veterancy. The Centaur's veteran abilities are these. Uh, veterancy 1 unlocks its uh, strafing base, which we just saw. Veterancy 2, driver training improves the vehicle's movement speed and rotation speed. And Veterancy 3, battle hardened crews improve the rate of fire and reload rate. Okay? So, how does the Centaur fare against certain enemy vehicles? We know it does very against infantry, but what about vehicles? So, here we have a Puma. Now, the Puma will outrange the Centaur if, and, and, can be, and can penetrate the Centaur quite reliably. However, if the Centaur gets close enough and is allowed to get some fire off, it will also kill the Puma fairly quickly as well, as one hour watched. What's next, then, driver? You can see the Puma is reliably penetrating us, but. We can see that about three, three bursts from the Centaur of Echancy 2 quickly takes down the Puma. And we, though, we did take. So, it's about five or so shots from the Puma to kill a Centaur. Now, let's re redo that again. Now, guys, I'll show you how the Centaur fares against the Panzer IV. And as you'll see, not very well. Even with it being Vection C3. You'll see the Centaur fails to penetrate most of its rounds against the Panzer IV here. However, some of the Panzer IV rounds can bounce the Centaur. If we were to get on the rear of the Panzer IV and hit it from the rear, more of our rounds would penetrate. As you can see now. More of our rounds are penetrating the Panzer IV. However, still, we will generally will lose this engagement. However, in a pinch, if you need, the, you know, if you had an anti-tank gun with your Centaur, 
Uh, in you might be able to beat a Panzer IV. That is the, however, if you aim for the rear armor, not the front. So there you guys have it. So, And then any other vehicle above a Panzer IV, you do not want to be engaging with the Sensar. You don't even really want to be engaging with a Panzer IV if you can help it. Um, but yeah, things like Panthers, King Tigers, steer clear of them with the Sensar. It'll absolutely get destroyed. Um, the Sensar also does quite well, uh, you know, kills the Panzer II quite quickly as well. And the Panzer II has a very hard time against penetrating the Sensar's armor. We'll pe probably pe uh, penetrate it alright from the rear, but generally, uh, Sensar will beat a Panzer II in a fight. And that's the Sensar, guys. Okay, guys, let's next go on to the Cromwell. So here we have a Cromwell. So the first thing you'll know about the Cromwell is that it has an ability you can upgrade. It's 25 editions. I would generally always do this. Why? Because it grants yourself more vision and increase the accuracy of the main gun. So what we'll do is we'll pop that on. And you can see that we gain a little bit more vision here, so which is always good. And that's a permanent increase. Okay, you don't have to, you're going to keep rebuying it. Once you've upgraded it once, you've always got it. Now, how is this the Cruiser compared to all other medium vehicles in the game? Because obviously the Austere... Uh, and the OKW, they have the Panzer IV, the Americans have the Sherman, the Soviets have the T-34. Now, the British, obviously, uh, here we have the Cromwell. Now, the Cromwell is probably one of the fastest uh, medium vehicles in the game, as I'll show you. On, on and off-road, it goes fairly quickly, so it's good at flanking and get behind enemy lines. It also can hold fire, prioritize vehicles, and it also has a very nice ability, 20 mission ability, which you don't need veterans for, which is a smoke shell. So, you have to do this. Fire where you want to do it. And it fires a smoke show in that general vicinity. And that is a great way to maybe screen yourself uh, from an enemy attack. Maybe you want to save a retreating squad. You could pop smoke with the, with the crumble, which I like doing a lot of. Or you could drop smoke again to a uh, blind enemy machine gun, for instance, and then push in with your infantry. So the smoke ability on the crumble is very, very handy. Here we go. Now, let's just show you guys in a, in a general one-on-one -on -one fight. So here we have a Panzer IV going to be fighting a Cromwell. Now generally the Panzer IV OKW variant uh, will beat the, um, the Cromwell. Even the Austere Panzer IV will probably do maybe a, have a better time. Um, you know, if you did a hundred, you know, you had a hundred times, you'd, you'd, you'd repeat this. The probably the Panzer IVs would come out on top. Why? Because they cost a bit more. They're slightly better. However, you know, the Cromwell, you know, again, is just as good as a Panzer IV when it comes to killing infantry and also penetrating other medium vehicles of its kind and you know, fl you know, flanking. Um, so let me just show you guys here. As you can see here that sometimes we'll, we'll bounce, sometimes we'll penetrate. And there you have it. See, the, so the Panzer IV beat the Cromwell there. I feel like the Cromwell will generally uh, bounce more sh more rounds off a Panzer IV than the Panzer IV will bounce off the, off the Cromwell, but both can bounce, both can miss, as you saw there in that engagement. Uh, but yeah, generally the Panzer, you know, the Panzer IV isn't as fast as the Cromwell, and um, you know, as the Cromwell is slightly cheaper, um, you can make more of them potentially, and uh, they're good for maybe flanking and maybe taking out high value targets like things like Stukas. Um, or, you know, if you get a couple of them, you can flank in. Again, it's all about um, combined arms. You know, you use if you use the Cromwell in conjunction with an anti-tank gun, you'll be able to beat an enemy Panzer or even a Panther, for instance. So, uh, it's just a, it's all a matter of how you use your units uh, in a fight. But generally, the Cromwell is a very good tank. The Cromwell's veteran ability reduces the fire smoke shell ability, the cooldown of that. Uh, veteran C2. Battle hardened crews will improve their main gun targeting and rate of fire. Which is three, they navigate the battle with ease and improve targets of increased weapon penetration. So they're uh, a bit faster and, you know, better, better penetrating of Vision C3. But that is your Cromwell. Next up, we have the Sherman Firefly over here. Now, the Sherman Fire also has the tank commander ability, which does the same thing like the Cromwell, so you can upgrade it, get a little bit more vision. And it also has another ability you can upgrade for 30 munitions, which is the Tulip Rockets, which will add. Two little rockets on the, each side of this uh, Cromwell. Now that unlocks an ability you can use on your Crom uh, on your uh, Sherman Firefly, costing 80 munitions. Uh, and what will happen is you'll fire off two rockets to your opponent. The first rocket will um, slow them, and the second rocket, if it connects, will stun them for a very short uh, amount of time, as I will uh, show off. It. And this is on top of the main gun firing as well. So you could deliver quite a... Um, a high amount of damage in a short amount of time with the Firefly if used correctly. Now the Firefly has great range as I'll show you now. So the King Tiger can fire up to about here, okay? Whereas the Firefly can shoot 
from from about here, okay? That's his uh, max range there. King's eye, he can only shoot up to there. So, if used effectively, your Firefly can always out keep shooting the King Tiger and outrange it. Remember, because the King Tiger is very slow as well. So, I'll just show you guys here. Our Firefly should start opening up on it. There you go. And then we'll, well, we'll probably want to get a little bit closer to ensure our rockets hit. There you go. One and two. See, you see that second shot uh, is now stunned the vehicle. Um, but you sure how quickly that stun? It was literally like 1.5 seconds or 2 seconds that stun goes off for. And, um, however, that stun could be the, the, you know, the amount of time you might need to be able to get a squad in there to lob a, a snare on with maybe your sapper squad or whatever, right? You can see here the, the, the Firefly can constantly plink away at the King Tiger, and the King Tiger can't fire back because it's out of range. And this is what you, this is the idea of what you need to be doing with the Firefly, right? You always want to be keeping your, you treat it like a sniper tank. You want to hit the back of, the back of the, your, your forces and uh, pick it away at the, the high enemy armor, like the King Tigers, the Panthers, and staying safe in range. If the Tiger tries to come forward, all you do is you need to kite, you just reverse back a bit, and you just keep plinking away. Now you'll notice that some of the rounds from the front will bounce, because it is a King Tiger after all, it's got one of the best armor in the game of any vehicle. But it also, you know, the Firefly will, every now and then, will penetrate from the front. But again, try it, if you try, if you can hit the, the, the rear arm of the King Tiger, you'll pretty much penetrate all the time. So the Firefly, guys, can actually shoot a lot further than it can see. As you can see here, this is how much you can see, but it can shoot all the way up to about here. So there's a big area where it can actually shoot, but it needs something to spot for it. Now, getting a sniper out would be very handy to do this, because you, 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 you can creep your sniper forward, have it on hold fire so it doesn't reveal itself, and, and have it in camouflage. And now we can see that there's a King Tiger there, and we can then get our Fireflies and open up and potentially finish off the King Tiger. There you go. What you never want to be doing though, chat, is this, which I see a lot of play people doing, with even like SU-85s and, 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 and Fireflies, is rushing the Firefly in first, you know? Because the Firefly, it can take a little a little bit of damage, but, um, you know, a couple of rocket and shots on it, and then, you know, an enemy tank shooting it as well, it won't, you know, it, it, will, it will die quite quickly, right? Um, so you always want to just, you know, why take damage when you can just sit back and plink away at your opponent, and keep hitting them because if you take damage, that's some that's repair time that's needed from your sapper squads. Then they could be in capping territory, they could be laying mines, they could be putting barbed wire down, or doing anything else more important than having to repair your firefly. So just always make sure that you don't you have your fire fly at the black back of your army and plinking away at your opponents. Okay. Uh, so the fireflies' veteran's abilities are these veteran crews are more skilled drivers, increasing the Sherman fireflies' acceleration, so it can move faster from a standing point. Um, Veteran crews are better able to target enemies, increasing their rate of fire as well as their turret rotation. Veteran crews are better able to target weak points in enemy armor, increasing accuracy in addition to damage. And also, it's worth knowing, obviously, that the Firefly can it has a 360 degree uh, turret traversal. But as you notice, that turning the turret does take some time. It's quite slow. And this is another reason why you want to be further back. You know, the back of your army. Because, the, you know, the further back you are, the less your turret has to turn to look at an enemy. And therefore, the, the faster your Firefly will be able to fire as well. There you go. That is the Firefly. Okay, guys, go on to the next thing, which is the 17 pounder. Here we have a 17 pounder already made to make one. Um, obviously, you've got to take up to tier 3 in your base. And once you've done that, you'll have access to build this with your Sapper Squad. 17 pound 80 gun emplacement, 400 manpower, 75 fuel, and 14 population cap. Can't play it, place it in a base sector, but you can't place it anywhere else on the map. Place it here, right? You then want to rotate it this way to shoot towards the enemy. That way, when you build the thing... Uh, the gun is already pointing towards the enemy, as I'll show you. There we go, 70 pounder up and ready, and it's already pointing towards the enemy. Right? Now, a 70 pounder can actually see these Volk squads. But I don't believe it will automatically fire on infantry. Right? It won't It won't fire on infantry unless told to. So, now, a 70 pounder, once it gains veteran C1, it has a, a Lox 8 flare ability. So, let's just turn the fog of, our, fog of war on real quick. Now, we can't see anything. So we pop the flare up. We can pop the flare quite far forward. You can see the circumference around it. And again, on, and you can see on the mini map over there as well, bottom left hand side, how far you can lob the flare. So let's lob the flare on the extreme point there. And this is quite handy. So you obviously pop the flare in the sky. As you can see it's going over there. And now we should see this big area. And uh, this is great to give your something for your gun to shoot at. So you, you, you obviously get vision. Then you might see enemy tanks here, and your 70 panel will start shooting. Because as you can see here, it can shoot a lot further than it can normally see. So that's the maximum amount of vision it's got, right? So again, you might need something to spot for it. Snipers, the flare, its own ability, um, infantry, anything up there, you want something to spot for it. And then if you activate piercing shot, you should be able to shoot through um, structures and things. So if we shoot through, we normally shoot through the hedgerow automatically if we just fire here, as you can see. 
But if we try and shoot through this building, maybe, I don't think we'll be able to actually hit through it. There you go. Now we'll activate piercing shot. And we'll try and see if we can fire over here and see if the shot will pierce through the building and I'm on the opposite side here. There you go. You see it's gone through the building and the shot's landed over here. Again, we'll try and shoot the extreme here and hopefully we might shoot through this building here. There you go. Through the house. Right through the house and out the other side. There you go. You can see, you can actually see the hole there where it went through. All the way through there and out the other side. So that's a nicer way. So if you've got vision, you can shoot through the house to hit your opponent there. His efficiency abilities are unlocks the piercing shot ability once it gets efficiency one. Efficiency two improves weapon efficiency, improves weapon accuracy and scatter. Efficiency three improves rate of fire. And so, yeah, that is the 17 pounder. Um, we'll just show you how effective it is against vi enemy vehicles, okay? We can't see them, so what do we do? Flare in the sky. We, we heard their enemy enemy armor over here, so we're going to pop a flare in the sky real quick to see what's going on. Gun crew ready and Activate piercing shot, and then we're going to try and now shoot that puma. And you can see it does a like, massive amount of damage, so it will pr pretty much two shot a puma. This is how much damage it'll do against a normal tiger. There you go. So that was about what? Ooh, 30%? Maybe just a bit more than 30% damage there. So two shots has brought the tiger down to about 40% health. And uh, yeah, you get the idea. It's very effective against vehicles and uh, it's got massive range as well. So very handy. Uh, but again, um, the counter to the 17 pounder is indirect fire or thing or infantry coming up with flamethrowers, that kind of thing, or Shreks. So you need to, need to make sure that you've got, um, you know, units nearby to repair. You, you know, it's in a safe location, so you've got, you know, it's not too far close to the front lines. The ideal place for a 17 pounder is probably maybe covering a VP point near the center of the map, so it's got a lot of, you know, it can cover a lot of ground. Um, and, uh, you know, you can just, for instance, you might want to put some mines down here on the flanks of your, um, of your 70 banner to stop enemy infantry getting closer. Now, your enemy opponent might, you know, OKW players might do, uh, use leagues to bombard it, or Ossia players might try mortars, mortar half troops with incendiary rounds. Um, generally, if you've noticed your opponent having those things out, it's probably not a good idea to go for a 70 banner in the first place, because, um, you know, if you're trying to repair it, and, and mid repair you get attacked again you're likely to lose your sapper squads as we talked about in the video beforehand so generally like you, 70 pound is okay if your opponent hasn't got much indirect fire if uh, your opponent um, does have a lot of indirect fire then you probably might best want to go for fireflies instead of the 17 pounder let's talk about hammer and anvil so what does hammer and anvil do right okay so first off hammer costs both things cost 200 manpower and 50 fuel you can only lock one or the other once you lock in one, you can't get the other stuff. So, Hammer gives you access to the Comet Tank, the Gammon Bomb on your infantry sections, and Emergency War Speed, along with Track Vehicle. So, we'll choose this one first. Like so. And now we have access to build the Comet Tank. And now you can see we can no longer have access to build the Churchill that's locked out. So, what we'll do... Now, you see our infantry sections now have access to lob gammon bombs for 50 munitions. You do not need to have upgraded the grenade package, the Mills Bomb package, to actually use the gammon bomb. So that's quite handy, and this is a, uh, a, a a grenade which, with a lot of explosives, it's got a, a longer cool, a longer um, time to explode. As I'll now, well, a lot of normal Mills bomb along with it, so you can see the Mills bomb blows up a lot quicker. It's like a second it takes to blow up, and the and the, uh, the gamma bomb is about three seconds or so. But if this goes off, it will. I'm absolutely wipe whatever it, what, you know, anything in that little area, it will, it will blow it up and can completely kill it. So it's a lot more powerful. Uh, it costs twice as much, but is, is very good. So that's the ability there. So if we were making um, our standard, for instance, Cromwell. So Cromwell's, your Comets, will now have access to um, Emergency War Speed. Now they can only gain Emergency War Speed, chat, once your engineers give it to them. So... Well, you need to come up, get a, yourself a uh, your, your, your Royal Engineers, your Sapper Squads, and then you need to come over to the vehicle. Even if it's a full health, you click repair on it. And then your, your Sapper Squad will come over to it, and they'll slow, you can see this little um, bar here. Well, once, once that is completed, that'll give the vehicle access to the emergency war speed, as we'll now see. There you go. So now we've got war speed enabled. I've eventually seen three Cromwell with war speed. It's one of the fastest things in the game, chat. So, um, combat, version C3. Give him more speed. So here we go. Normal Cromwell with war speed activated. With HC3. Off it goes. You can see how fast that is. Incredibly quick.
Too fast for you, boy. And then we're out of there. Gotta go fast. Cromwell. There we go. Now, the war speed can be activated on all vehicles. Um, even you can give, you can activate war speed on, for instance, your UC to make it go faster or your sensor. Uh, and then let's look at tracking vehicles. So here we go. So the, the track vehicle ability. Uh, tank crews are trained to track enemy vehicles they have hit. Vehicles are hit will remain visible for an extended period of time. So once you hit an enemy vehicle, even through the fog of war, uh, it will stay visible for a short amount, for a little bit longer than it normally otherwise would. Which will allow, for instance, anti-tank guns and other things to then lay, you know, to get more, maybe more shots in potentially, uh, if they can't normally see it. Okay, guys, let's talk about the Comet. So what is good about the Comet? Now, the Comet is one of the best vehicles in the game. It's good against both enemy armor and killing infantry. Um, it's quite heavily, got quite a bit of HP and armor itself, so it could take a bit of a beating. Um, it's got a couple abilities, so... It's also got the tank commander to give it more accuracy and vision, like as we've gone through on other vehicles. Uh, it can lob a grenade outside the hatch, which is very unique. Um, Churchill's can do this as well, but Comet, uh, but standard vehicles like uh, Cromwell's and Centaur's can't. So here we go, we just lob a grenade. Hatch lobs out, and the grenade blows up. Quite effective against enemy infantry, if the enemy infantry is around the tank or anything, or you want to lob that against an enemy support weapon. Very good. There's a very distinctive animation as well, as you'll see the hatch will open up. The hatch will open up and they'll lob the grenade out like so. And it'll... So if you're playing against the Comet, you'll watch for that um, the animation of this little hatch opening up here. And then you'll know that a grenade is imminent. Um, the Comet can also fire a smoke shot like the Cromwell for 20 munitions as well. However, once it gets version C1, it unlocks the ability to do a white phosphorus shell. Now this also costs the same amount of munitions. It also blocks vision. However, it damages the enemy and slows them down. So let's say we had an enemy like support weapon position and uh, you knew where it was. So you can move in. So your comet can easily take a shell, a shell or two from this. You come in here, you'd lob down the white phosphorus round like so. You would pull away. He won't be able to shoot back because of the smokes blocking his line of sight. And you can see here, how that white phosphorus cell is slowly weakening that crew. So then I could come back in there and then fire off one more round and then quite quickly finish them off. Okay, same thing. Let's say we had uh, uh, some Volks Grenadier squads attacking us. See, so we have a group of Volks pushing in towards us. We notice them rushing in, charging in. We wanted to just maybe stop them from pushing in so fast, so we'll lob the, the white phosphorus right in front of them. Like so. And you can see that the guys that are caught up in that in that smoke, they're, they've, they're, they're considerably slower than the guys in front that weren't really hit by it much, okay? And it slows them down, and if they stay in it, they take it, they take a lot of damage, okay? And uh, as you can see, we'll just drive around a bit and show you how effective the... Co the uh... So we'll lob the grenade out of the hatch there, like so, it goes the grenade. Potentially crush them as well. There you go. Very effective against infantry and also armor. However, it's worth saying that the, the, the Comet is one of the most expensive vehicles in the game. If you go back to the base again, it costs you know 480 man per 175 fuel. So it is quite expensive. But if you keep it alive and it gets more veteran C, it'll do quite well. So veteran C1, uh, as we said, unlocks the white phosphorus smoke shell ability. Uh, veteran C2 uh, improves the weapon tracking and accuracy. And veteran C3 improves the vehicle mobility the crew will defend the tank with grenades and improve reload time so yeah efficiency three i believe it will periodically just lob grenades at our enemies um without having to sp spend munitions for it so let me just show you guys this again so uh we'll just spawn some again some more okw volks around the, the tank selection owner enemy and you'll see that it'll just be grenades will be casually lobbed from the tank towards the enemy there you go there goes a grenade off there It's actually hard to see where the nades are being loved from. But you've got, you know, you can see the timer though for it. There you go. So it seems to lob two grenades every so often when enemies are. There you go, there goes another grenade out the front. 
The grenades are pretty good as well when, when they actually blow up and, and kill people. There you go, and that's all free. You haven't got to spend any resources to lob those grenades there. And you can also lob another, you know, your standard grenade out from the hatch as well. Um, so now we'll just show you guys a, um, a Comet versus something like So against a Panzer IV, Comet will win all day long. Against something like a Panther, it's more of an even fight. Uh, both times, you know, both both likely to bounce off their armor here. Also penetrate as well. And since we're Veteran C3, we probably should win this fight. We fire faster than he does. But again, we both take quite a long time to kill each other. Um, so again, you want obviously other things helping you out here. Maybe a Firefly, an anti-tank gun, that kind of thing. But, you know, if, if that Panther was Vetra C3, that would have been probably a lot even, a lot more even of a fight. Um, but yeah, hopefully that shows you guys the Comet is very good against everything. Um, but again, it's very expensive. It's also fairly, uh, quite, quite fast. And, uh, yeah. Alright guys, on to the final bit of the boot camp, which is Anvil. Uh, in tier 3, so Anvil, again, 200 man power, 50 minutes, 50 fuel. Um, it unlocks the Churchill. Uh, allows your engineers to upgrade heavy engineer package. Uh, airburst shells for these 25 pounders in your base. And advanced warning. Capture territories give increased vision. So let's upgrade that right now. So here's your standard Churchill. Now. Okay, so what does the Churchill get? Now the Churchill is a very slow vehicle compared to things like the Cromwell and the, the Comet. It's one of the slower vehicles in the game. However, it does benefit from more armor. And it's you know, it's a, it's a very tanky tank. If, uh, if you forgive me for that for that expression, uh, it's very it's very good against infantry. It'll do quite it'll do very well against Panzer fours and things like that. So if your opponent is pa spamming Panzer fours, the Churchill would be pretty good, I guess, because um, the Panzer fours will have a very hard time against penetrating the Churchill, um, and the Churchill will, will will have a fairly easy time against penetrating them. Um, so yeah, again, good against infantry it's, and slow. So it can also, Veteran C1, it'll gain the ability to lob grenades, like um, the Comet can. So combat, Veteran C1, like so. Lobs grenades, again, you'll see the, the hatch open. Grenades lobbed out, blows up and kills infantry. Now, Churchill does can't lob smoke canister rounds, but it can do the infantry support. So it'll, what it'll do is you spend 30 munitions, and it'll start putting smoke behind itself. So this could be a good way to screen for your infantry as they push forward. So you could push forward like this and it makes a nice big smoke area like, in, in, you know, around itself as it pushes forward, right? So this is like blocking vision from all your, your opponent as it pushes forward, okay? Or you can activate this smoke and retreat. So enemies are pushing you and attacking you, you want to activate the smoke. So you can reverse back through your smoke and, cut, and have, have some kind of cover for yourself. Um, so it's a moving smoke screen, which is quite nice. Okay, so there you go. That's 30 munitions for that ability. So let's have a uh, OKW Panzer IV, tank Panzer IV. Ready for trouble. Okay. As you can see here, the Panzer IV is having a real hard time penetrating the Churchill. Also, the guy in the church is also having a hard time as well, but... You can see here, that one round that penetrated for the Panzer IV did about what? No, it doesn't even look like 10% health. Every round that the Churchill penetrates does about 20% health damage, I believe. There we go. So you can see, I know, it took a, it took a while because there's a you know obviously RNG again. You never know if your shot's going to bounce or penetrate, but you can always improve your chances, guys, of getting penetration shots by flanking and hitting your opponent in the rear rather than hitting from the front. But as you can see here, we took about what 40% health damage and we killed the Panzer IV. You know, and that and this will this will be a, a, you know this will pretty much happen nearly every time a Churchill faces against a, a Panzer IV. Okay, now a, a Churchill against a Panther is another story. The Churchill um, will hardly ever penetrate the Panther, and the Panther will um, quite reliably penetrate the Churchill. So you don't really want to be fighting a Panther versus a Churchill. Now the Churchill's range isn't that great. Um, the Comet, 
uh, it has better range than the Churchill's. So here are the abilities. You've got Veteran C1. Unlocks crew cells, self-defense abilities. Does the grenades. Veteran C2. Uh, reloads the main gun and positions the turret more quickly. And Veteran C3. Elite recluse repair engine criticals on their own after a short amount of time. Which is a very unique thing. So if uh, we were to make this a Veteran C3 selection... Let's say it received a damage engine, right? And you can see here, Veteran C3 gives the Churchill the ability to automatically repair critical damage done to the engine. There you go. Engine repaired. Didn't have to do anything, and it repaired the, 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 the damage after a short amount of time it received that, 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 that damage. So there you go. That's quite a very handy thing to have with, with Churchill's. This, I think it's the only vehicle in the game that actually automatically repairs its, its, its critical uh, after a short amount of time without spending any resources to do so. We've got a commander. You might be wondering throughout this entire game, the, the series, I've got the, you know, all my vehicles have had this ability here. This is a specific commander ability, which allows me to repair without having any units nearby. But we won't go into commander abilities for this video. Uh, but I'm just, you know, saying that is a commander ability that you won't normally see that ability on your standard units. Okay, so let's go on to the second thing um, in Anvil, which is the heavy engineer. So you get engineer squads out of your base. You probably have them on five man by now into the late game. So they're five man squads. And they now unlock this other ability down by the bottom next to their minesweeper, which is called heavy engineers. The royal engineers get additional equipment, allowing them to construct buildings and repair faster, but limiting their mobility in combat. They're also equipped with Vickers K light machine gun. So well, let's upgrade one. So you can see now... They gain these Vickers, this Vickers K machine gun, which makes them a little bit better in combat. But if we were to move these squads forward together, this squad will be faster than that squad because that is, you know, this has made them a little bit slower. It's not much, mind you, but it has made them slightly slower. So I'll now put two vehicles here, and you will compare the damage. So we'll put two Cromwells here. They're preparing basically at the same time here. And you'll see the guys with the heavy repair kits will repair a lot faster than these guys. Okay, the, guy, the guys are left at 38 seconds on the clock. And the other guys on the right are still repairing. So we'll wait until they finish and see how much quicker in terms of time that was. Done. So almost 20 seconds faster, chat. These guys are repairing than these guys. A, a tank, of, you know, from low health all the way up to full health. These guys are about 20 seconds faster uh, overall. So it's a, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, you can all, you can still um, give these guys a sweeper with this as well, so they can still sweep mines and stuff as well, and that won't impact their repair speed, which is which is always very which is always very good. Um, so yeah, generally whenever I'm playing um, Cup of Curious Two and I'm choosing Anvil, uh, I would probably get two sappers and upgrade them both with the repairs, and this allows me to repair my vehicles really fast. Having two of these guys repair one uh, one of my vehicles back up to full health in, in, in seconds, pretty much, when it would take up maybe a lot longer. So, uh, that's generally a good idea, having two of these guys with that with those uh, heavy um, repair kits on. And again, that's 60 munitions for that. One more quick thing, guys, is that the, even once you've upgraded the Minesweeper and the Heavy Engineer Package, you can still pick up weapons from uh, the base. You can pick up more Bren Guns or Piats. You can see, one, two. So, we've got two Piats. We have the Vickers K... And we have the increased repairs, as you can see. There's the Vickers K and the two Piets on this guy. These two guys over here. However, that's, so, that's a lot of munitions, guys. That is 160 munitions. Wait, no. Oh, and the Minesweeper as well. So, that is 190 munitions, correction, that you've spent on one squad. That is quite extreme. So, if your unit preservation isn't very good, I wouldn't really recommend doing that. Um... I'd probably just leave them as heavy repair guys, but yeah, that you can do that if you wanted to. The, the option is there, right? Let's talk about air, airburst shells. So airburst shells, if you want to fire um, your twenty-five pounders now. What will happen is instead of um, them just firing normal rounds like you you've seen in pre in the previous video, if I lob this round over here, you'll see that these seven these twenty-five pounders will start to turn around. And what you'll see is you'll see airburst shells alongside, there you go, there's one there, your normal rounds as well. So you get almost like twice the amount of artillery here. And you'll see that these airburst shells will do very good, have very good effect against this infantry. So there you go, you can see that really hurt them and these tanks are blinded. 
And you can see there's airbrush shells. So if they connect with enemy infantry, they do massive amount of damage. Yep, and there you go. So you can see that is the airbrush shells. Right. And then advanced warning. So let's check out advanced warning then. So here we guys can see this is the standard amount of vision that you have around a, uh, a captured territory point if you have no units nearby. So with advanced warning now we can see the entirety of the of the point. Right, so we can see what, you know whenever a squad is capping our point, we can see it clearly. Um, you know when we when we own the point. So here are all the points. You can see the entirety of the point we have vision, in, and that's you can only get that through anvil uh, and not hammer. Right, finally, guys. So that's all the abilities there. So let's just go through. Finally, why would you choose maybe a comet or over a Churchill or a Churchill over a comet? I mean, I I would personally put the choice down to uh, my resource income and also what I want more. I mean. Both the Churchill and Comet are good, but I'd probably always maybe pick a Comet over a Churchill because the Comet is faster, um, it, can, it has more range, it's more reliably, it has a, a bigger gun so it can penetrate enemy armor, uh, you know, higher level enemy armor, so Panthers and above more reliably. Um, and also the White Phosphorus round is very good, so I'd always generally pick the, uh, the Comet over the Churchill. However though, I really like the repairs of the, um, of the Sapper Squads. So generally, I might never even pick Churchills, guys. I might just pick Anvil, and just for the repairs on my on these guys, and also, also the obviously the vision and the airburst shells for my infantry sections. When you know infantry sections and the sniper, and they love the coordinated fire ability, um, because that, I feel that's better than the other stuff that you get with the you know with with, with hammer. Uh, the war speed, you know, yeah, it's free, which is good, I guess, uh, and allows you to flank. But you know, I'd rather the, the repairs because you want to get your vehicles back into the fight as fast as you can. Um, you want some decent artillery to be able to dislodge your opponent's support weapons and the airburst shells give you that. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, your, you know, your Cromwells, if you want something to kill an enemy, enemy vehicle, you can get a Firefly rather than a Comet. And then you can have your Cromwells there that'll, that'll, do, that'll kill the infantry that, that, the, um, that the, the Churchill could otherwise do. Uh, you might want to, you know, eventually get yourself a Churchill. Um, but generally, I'm, I'm more happy going with something cheap like a Cromwells because, you know, a Churchill's expensive to lose, right? Um, and it might end, you might end up feeding the enemy veterans to you with a Churchill because you know as long you know you, you can take a lot of damage with a Churchill, but if you if you're letting your enemy constantly penetrate you, every time they penetrate you, they they get a big chunk of veterancy, and you don't want to be playing up against Panthers that you know that's the way you end up playing against Panthers with it four and five, you know King Tigers high level like that with the, with lots of veterancy because you feed the veterancy, um, so you don't want to, you want to avoid that, and with um. You know, with cheap Cromwells, you can rush in with a Cromwell, maybe take out a Stuka, lose the Cromwell, but at least that was a good, maybe a fairly good trade, maybe at the time. You can't really do that, you know, with a Comet, it's super expensive to do. You don't want to waste a Comet to try and do that. You want something cheap and fast, you know, that, that can do that. So that's probably what I would do. I'd probably try and normally pick Anvil over Hammer, in my personal opinion, because again, pairs are great, airbus shells, the extra vision you get. And, uh, I mean, you know, your, your Fireflies and Cromwells can do pretty much the same thing a, um, a Comet can do. Uh, and then you can have more. I, I kind of generally prefer to have more guns firing than, than less. So obviously, because as the the the, uh, the comet costs a lot more, as we saw, um, no Cromwell, you could probably maybe get almost two Cromwells out for the price of one um, one comet, um, or at least one and a, one and a half basically. So you could you could afford to maybe uh, make more vehicles out uh, if you, you know if you went for Cromwell. And then obviously you have more guns firing, which means more damage you're doing to your opponent. Uh, and again, you know, you don't want to throw all your eggs in one basket, right? That's why I don't normally like going, to, you know, re recommend people going for King Tigers when they're playing OKW. Um, because that's a lot of uh, resources invested into one unit. And if you lose it, which is very easy to do because it's just a slow, slow moving tank. Uh, and then, you know, all, that, all of those resources are wasted. So at least here, if you lose one of your Cromwells, it's not the end of the world, right? You might be able to come back into the game. You lose something expensive like a Comet, uh, maybe not so much. And uh, there we have it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. That is the final bit for the British Brute Camp, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Hey guys, thank you for watching that video. If you want more content, please click on the link over here and over here. If you would like to subscribe, click on the button down here. Also click on the notification bell down there so you're notified whenever I post new YouTube content. I also stream nearly every single day on Twitch. Uh, I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash helpinghands. Uh, and if you want to show your support there, please do subscribe, uh, as all your support helps me do this full time. And uh, yeah, guys, I appreciate it as always and catch you next time. Bye-bye.